Hello everyone. In today's video, I am going to show you the basics of the king and pawn and game. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, first, I am just going to set up a random position. Say this pawn is here, this king is here and this king is here. The white pieces are going this way. So, the first principle I am going to tell you about is the square. What is the square you ask? Uh, the square, now, I am going to show you with an example. So, let's say that it's white pawn. You play this, push from the pawn, play after it, drop it, push, stop, push, stop. But the black king is not in time and it's a promotion. Now, if in this position it was black to move, then he'll move to here. Now you push, block, stop. Push, stop, push, and he manages to stop it. So, how is this related to the square? That's what I'm going to tell you. So, the square is basically the area that the opposing king has to be in to stop this pawn from promoting. So, uh, the square is first you count how many squares are left for the pawn to push so it can promote 1, 2, 3, 4 then you count those many squares to the sides of the pawn as this is an A pawn it only has one side so 1, 2, 3, 4 and then you just join it th uh, down and so you get the square for this pawn it's this, this, this and this so now, if it was white to move, he would simply push his pawn. Now the square is 3, so 3, 4 and 4. So now you get a 4 by 4 square and even though the king moves, it's outside this square. It's just outside, but it's outside, so it can't stop the promotion. See? Now this small square, this tiny square, and it just can't stop the promotion. You have to be inside the square. Even just inside it works, but you can't be outside. So now suppose that in this position it was black to move. Now black would play king to here. Now if you see that black's king is in the square. Because the square for this pawn was here, here, here and here. So it's just inside it. But he's inside it. He can stop the promotion. Now he pushes, it's black's turn, he does this, and he can stop the promotion. So, that was the square explained. So, now I'm going to teach you another thing in the king and pawn endgame, which is called the opposition. So, let's say this king is over here and this king is over here. I'm just giving this example to teach you opposition and this is not a real game. So, the aim for the white king is to get to one of these three squares. So, it's white's turn. Now, opposition says that the king should be on the same file or an even number of files away from the king, from the opposing king, and an odd number of squares away. So they're on the same file. Now, let's see how many squares there are between. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are 6 squares between the kings. And to gain the opposition, now the most natural move for white here would be to get the king here because he has to get here, right? Well, no, it's not that simple because if you were to move this, then black had the cunning move, king here, and now you see that he's got the opposition because there's an order number square. One, two, three, four, five. So what we need to do in this position is not king here, 
it came here. Now they're on the same file. And one, two, three, four, five. Five squares. Five is in odd number, so white has the opposition. Wait, you can also call opposition as in the sight of vision of the other game because you can see him clearly. Now it's white to move, sorry, black to move. Uh, if he does this, suppose, then we play him here. So there are three squares. So we have the opposition in here. Now, there are two, three ways to get the opposition. You can king, move the king here, move the king here, or move the king here. But since our aim is to get to one of these three squares, the best move would be king here. Now we have the opposition since there's just one square between them. So king here, king here, king here, king here. King comes here. You can see that we're getting closer, but this king just doesn't let us come there. So king here, king here, and he plays king here. Now the natural move we must be thinking was to gain the opposition. I have to keep one square apart, so I play my queen here. Well, that's wrong because now we have the smart move. King comes here. And now, see, you're threatening to come to this square, after which these two squares would be clearly safe. So, now, black will be thinking, oh, yay, you give me the opposition, I'll take it. But I didn't give you the opposition. And now you can just come here. King must go here. If he goes here, then that and this. So he goes here. Come here, goes here, we come here, and we've got it. So, the best move here is not to get the opposition, but here. But now it's the same technique. You take the opposition, going away, you come here, the king comes here, king comes here, and again, we get here. So we win. Now, let's look at this position. Now, what? So over here, black played king here. Now, why did white play this? Now, this is called outflanking, which is the third term I'm going to tell you. Outflanking basically means that in this position, the black king had to give way for the white king. There was no other option. So he had to give way. And now these two squares are controlled by this king. And it's black to move. So he plays this. Again we play this. Forcing black to give way. If he goes here. Then we again use outflanking. To stop the king from coming to these three squares. So basically outflanking is something you can use in an... It's something you can use to get opposition to be your advantage. If you don't like using opposition, no, both are equally important. We have to use both of them to win in a basic pawn and game. Okay. So, next thing I'm going to tell you is breakthroughs. So, suppose I take these two things off the board. I place this and there is a pawn over here so i'll just this is fine yeah and i put the kings this king is here and this king is here white pawns are going this way black pawn is coming this way it's white to move and can you find the best move for white while i give you some seconds if you found g4 well done. But black's like, hey, you're just giving me a free pawn. No. Because now before I tell you what black I do, now it's threatening to take this pawn after which we can promote. So if you 
different if he tries to get his king in this look at this square again so it's this big black is clearly outside so we can promote so over here black will take and that's when you have the smart move h5 because now this pawn's path is wide open that's what we used this pawn for we used it to clear up this path so now let's see again this is the square actually this is the square and you can see that there's a whole pile here between so over here he won't move the king he'll try that okay i see that you're doing that okay i'll try to promote my own board. so you do that he comes here and now don't do anything silly and just play this you must stop this pawn from promoting and if he does just to waste a move then you can promote easily and win the game so those were the four concepts of kingdom pawn end games i told you today if you want me to make another video on these pawn end games so i'll surely make that and bye for now